Is it worth it to make my own butter? So for me, because I have a milk cow, it is worth it to make butter because I get the cream, I have the cow, it's worth it. If you had to buy cream from the store, depending on what you paid for it, it's not worth your time and effort. Um, if you are able to get milk from a farm and you can get a decent amount and you want to make cheese or yogurt or whatever, the skim milk, then it's probably worth it. But for the most part, the people making their own butter are the people who have a milk cow. It's fun to make butter every now and again just to show your kids, but for like your regular consumption of butter, it's probably not worth it if you don't have a cow. I'm making a batch of butter and I thought I would show you guys how I make it. I use my Vitamix blender and this makes things a lot quicker and easier. So I'm gonna show you my streamlined way of making butter in the Vitamix. I could fill this up a lot fuller with cream, but for simplicity for you guys, this is a one quart, one liter batch of heavy raw cream. I'm making cheese and I don't want to make cheese with skim milk so I'm just skimming a bit of cream off of each jar to make a bit of butter and then leaving the rest to just go into the cheese. It's not quite separated, it's just about there, but I wanted to show you this. It looks like really grainy whipped cream. And um, I'm just shoving down the sides and we're gonna do the last little bit. It's gonna become butter in a second. So this next part is where we rinse the butter. And a lot of people do this by hand, but I've discovered I can just do it in my Vitamix, the first steps, and it really makes things more hands off and less messy hands. So what I do first is I go like this and this frees up more buttermilk so I can strain more out. Ooh, children, you're loud. Okay, now we're gonna 
gonna rinse this with just cold tap water. So, see if I can do this one handed. Okay, so first we're gonna rinse the lid out. Sure it's nice and cold. Okay, so first rinse the sides to make sure all that residue is not gonna just get in there later once you've done the work. Okay, we're gonna get a strainer again. So, this is more work one-handed than it is two-handed, especially when my kitchen's not fully clean here. Is the kitchen ever fully clean? No. Just in case to catch those little bits. And again, do the shaky shaky to get extra water and buttermilk out. Now we're gonna do more cold water. Let's just splash this all over the plate, right? So, get these little bits that we caught in here. This is why we have the strainer, because every bit is precious. Give it a good little shake to get... Okay, and then this is our last rinse here, where we're actually gonna put the cold water in and then put it back on Vitamix. So the water looks pretty clear there. Let's see if this stirs up anything here. We need the lid. Let's not turn that on without the lid. Okay, so we're just gonna have it on low. See, and it stirs up a whole bunch more out of there. The water's cloudy again already. If the water is really cloudy, then do this a couple times, but I'm happy with just this, and now we're gonna strain this out last time. Beautiful butter, guys. Oh, goodness, that color. Then we all share the bowl. So my next step here is I just Get all the butter into a bowl out of the strainer. Yes, it uses a lot of dishes to make butter. Um, and I'm actually gonna swap what spoon. A wet wooden spoon. So traditionally there'd be butter paddles. I just have these wooden spoons and the butter doesn't stick to them like it does to here. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna press the butter to get that excess water out. I can't dump it too far over to show you or I'll dump water up. But so I put the bowl on and I zero it out. Guys, can you cool your jets a little bit? And then I put the butter on to see how much I have. So I have 14 ounces of butter, which is a shy pound. You can just shape it and leave it here, but I actually like salting butter, and you salt one teaspoon per pound of butter. So, now I'm gonna sprinkle this, just a scant teaspoon of salt on here, and then knead it all in with the wooden spoon. That's all that happens. I find if you salt it, I never used to do this, but it, um, it means I can leave it on the counter and it doesn't go too sour, it's too strong. And often homemade butter has a really strong taste, like almost like cheese tasting is so strong. And the salt kind of mellows it out. So at this point you could just put it in the fridge, you could put it in a container and you can put it in the you can put it in a container, you can put it in the fridge. I like to weigh it out so it's pre-measured. 
And I actually have a neat butter, vintage butter mold that my mom got me at an antique store. And I use it, it makes one pound blocks, but actually I'm um, just measure out eight ounce blocks because I prefer to have eight ounce blocks versus one pound blocks. And again, it's wooden so the butter doesn't stick to it, but you gotta get it wet first. So I just rinse it with water and then the butter doesn't stick. Not today. Because I have one sleepover at your house. And that's what it looks like, so I'm just gonna get those edges there that smooshed out a bit. Push it down. And there we go, mine has lines in the top. Some are really pretty, but there we go. We got a nice little half pound block of butter. And then this one's not quite half a pound, so I'll actually probably keep it out so I don't confuse it with my half pound. So, we started with a quart of cream. We have 14 ounces of butter. And the buttermilk we have like two and a half, three cups, something like that. And that'll make excellent pancakes. I'll link below my oatmeal pancake recipe that you could soak the oats in the buttermilk first overnight. I throw the butter in the freezer. And you'll see probably, yeah, there's the last butter making, the scrap, but it wasn't quite eight ounces. I freeze it on the tray, and then I move it to a bag. So whenever I make the next butter, if there's still butter left on the tray, I just do that. And then this one, get put in, and away we go. Um, it takes a good few dishes, which honestly, most of them, a good hot rinse and into the drying rack is all they need. And you get buttermilk out of it. It's not the same as the buttermilk you buy at the store. That's actually cultured buttermilk. This is buttermilk that's the byproduct of butter making and it's thin, like it's thin like skim milk. Maybe not skim milk, but it's thin. It's not like that thick buttermilk you're used to. You can leave this buttermilk out and it will culture on its own because it's raw and it will become that thick buttermilk you're used to. 